Okay, this is going to be the second of a series of uh, the mathematics involved with uh, reticle range finding and downrange zeroing with uh, reticles and turrets in the field and at the range. Um, one of the important points about mill dot mill range, you got to mention in the first part, was um, this five variable equation, the mill ranging formula in the most basic form, um, with it you can use, you can calculate any one of these um, variables. You can leave any one of these as an unknown as once the rest of the variables are known. In other words, you can calculate target size once the range is known. It's re re commonly referred to as reverse milling. Um, we've actually accomplished this in the field before with some amazing degree of accuracy. Uh, one time we actually calculated the range to a target at 1,000 yards that was within a half inch, half inch of its true dimension using this system where we milled a target or we calculated a subtension on a target of known dimension at a known range and then re-milled the 1,000 yard target. And it was it's pretty amazing what can be accomplished with this stuff in the field. Um, another aspect of this, no understanding this equation, is that you can get some ideas to, as to the accuracy of your reticle subtension versus the target size that you're using. Um, uh, in other words, if you calculate a decimal equivalent for a certain range of 6 tenths, you may want to know how many yards difference is going to be if it's 1 half or 7 tenths. If that's your mill reading, or what referred to as a decimal equivalent, is actually our mill reading. Um, but, uh, and that will let you know just what kind of accuracy you can expect to get. You know, you have to understand that when you're guessing between stadia points, or it's, it's referred to as interpolation, um, you can expect a level of accuracy about one tenth of, of, of a unit, depending on you know, how large your unit is. Um, there's a lot of variables that goes into this. It's not always perfect, but this is the mathematics that defines it, and it's fun to play with in the field. Okay, when it comes to downward and zero and use the mill dot mill range formula, let's take a look at a, an example here. Um, if you think about it, a bullet drop at a, uh, a bullet drop at any particular distance is really the same type of dimension as a target size is when you refer when you're referencing it through a reticle or turret. So um, if that's the case, I, you know, I remember when I first thought about this stuff, I thought, well, it's got to be the same mathematics that defines it, and as it turns out, it is. Um, let's take a look at uh, say a bullet drop of 60 inches. Um, using a turret um, that's calibrated an inch per hundred yards, either one eighth inch per hundred yard or quarter inch per hundred yards. But if it's got the, um, if it's marked off in, in inch per hundred yards, such as a target turret, we can you can calculate how many um, turret clicks we can come up, or what number to go to in inch per hundred yards, or minute of angle. And this will be uh, we're using it as a range of 635 yards. So 60 inches of bullet drop, and 635 yards range of subtension or turret click is going to be whatever this measurement is per 100 yards. Let's take a look at it. Okay, 60 inches of bullet drop is 635 yards. So 60 times 100, once again, equals 6,000, of course. Now we're going to do this times divided by 635. And that is going to equal 9.45, or basically you would crank to 9.5 inch per, uh, uh, you know, on your target turret. So that's really the mathematics that defines that. I just want to make sure that you know, a lot of people do it a different way. A lot of people use factors. They maybe combine the range of subtension divided or times the bullet drop. Uh, there's a lot of different ways or different ways to manipulate these equations. Um, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, I just wanted to show you guys that when it comes to downrange zeroing, it's also the same sort of a system. Suppose you want to know 60 inches of drop using, set, using your 11 inch per 100 yard measurement here. We want to know what what part of this interpolatively we need to use for 635 yards. So let's calculate why again your, your uh, basically your mill reading or decimal equivalent. So that would be 60 inches times 100 again, okay, divided by 11 equals 545. You divide that by 635 once again. And you're going to need to use about or 0.85 or round off to 0.9. So 9 tenths of the way down to your 11 inch per 100 yard measurement here is that's going to be your zero that you're going to use for 635 yards. So, um, you know, that's just how this, this kind of mathematics uh, is applied. One of the things I want to take a look at real quick while we have time because it takes a long time to load these YouTubes. Take a look at this uh, simple center point optic. I put these little things on my rim fires to play around with at long range. They're 70 bucks. Uh, you know, if you have 70 bucks to throw away, you know, you can buy one of these things. Actually, I found I've got two of these now, and I found that the red, that the turret is actually repeatable, and it uh, it also returns to zero. So it's a pretty nice system once you get your 
um, your turret zeroed out. Um, the nice thing about this is this is a, a 7 mil unit. I wasn't going to purchase this optic until I take, took a look through the plastic uh, wrapping at, at Walmart. When I looked through that son of a gun, I saw 7 mil units, actually 14 total vertically as well and also horizontally. And it looked like they were pretty fine reticle and looks like maybe two tenths mil dots, which is what the standard is these days. What would most guys are using, most companies are using two tenths of a mil dot. And I thought, well, that might be kind of fascinating to play with. So I purchased it, and especially when I found out that this is what they were, the uh, reticle is located in the second focal plane or the rear focal plane. So that means that when you change the magnification of this optic, the reticle subtension changes also. In other words, the image size gets larger and smaller, but the reticle stays the same, so it occupies a, a different area on the target. As you go, you know, as you go in and out with the magnification, and it's pretty interesting to know because what that does, and it's actually a proportional system, so you can count, make calculations of vertical subtensions by using the magnification of the optic. Now, what's fun to play with is if you're using this for vertical um, zeroing, you got your mil dot reticle, and there's 3.6 inch per hundred yard, and this happens to be calculated for 10 power. In this optic, you can see, you see the dot here. There's no, there's no witness mark in the 10 power, but just, it's in the literature, uh, I believe, someplace. But I checked this also to see if this was correct. I measured it at 100 yards. It's, it's as calibrated. We're at 10 power. And it's 16 power. It actually becomes uh, 2.55 or 2.25 inch per 100 yards. Because as you increase magnification, you decrease reticle subtension. So that means that a second focal plane reticle subtension versus magnification is inversely proportional. So let's take a look at that real quick with our calculator. So that means that um, if we divide six, 10 by 16 and we multiply that times 3.6 inch per 100 yards, which is our uh, mil dot mil uh, calibration for 10 power, that means it's 16 power it goes down to 2.25 inch per 100 yards. Now this is a quarter inch per hundred yard system. So you can basically, in a way, kind of make this a mill-mill system, what they refer to as a mill turret and a mill reticle. It's not going to be the mill radiance of tension. It's not going to, every click is not going to become 0.36 inch per hundred yards or one-tenth of a mill um, in this optic. But if you crank this optic down to a certain magnification, you can get that equal to 2.5 inch per hundred yards and with, and that would be 10 times each click in here. So in other words, if you take 2.5 and divide it by 10, you're going to get your quarter inch per 100 yard click. So basically, you can click from dot to dot in tenths. So if you know that at 485 yards, you need 3.4 mil of, of compensation, uh, let's say, at, when it's 2.5 inch per 100 yards between stadia lines, stadia points in here, stadia dots, that means that you can go up to, you can go down to your three mil mark and crank up three of those things in the very bottom of it because it's still that relationship between the dot and the unit of subtension is still going to be two tenths dot diameter per uh, if you go in between the like areas on the mil dot like the center one center one mil dot to the next no, the center of the next mil dot so that's kind of a, a, a nice and fascinating thing to know and we'll take a look at the math behind that we'll find out what magnification this needs to be cranked to so if we know that uh, that's 2.25 inch per 100 yards at 16 power, but we want to get to, to whatever magnification is 2.5 inch per 100 yards, then we take 2.25 divided by 2.5, and that equals 9 tenths times 16. 16 power, because that's where 2.25 inch per 100 yards is between dot centers. And that equals 14.4. So if we crank this down to 14.5 magnification, I don't know, right about there, so it's a good idea to measure it, but you know, you can see how the math works with this. Then now it now this becomes basically a mill, a mill reticle, mill turret, quote unquote, where the mill unit now is 2.5 inch per hundred yards instead of 3.6 inch per 100 yards. This stuff is a lot of fun to play with in the field. It is amazing what you can do with this kind of stuff. I love to play with this kind of stuff. It's really, really fascinating. And uh, 
you know, I mean, this stuff actually works pretty good. I mean, this is center point optic is is not bad for seventy dollars that you may pay it. I'm not. It's not going. It's not a not high quality Nikon. It's not a Night Force. It's not a Leopold by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, it's not bad for the money that you pay for. It. You know, if you want to take a chance, you know, they guarantee it. So if it doesn't work, you can always take it back. You know. So anyway, that's about all I have for you for now. Um, and if I can think of something else, maybe we'll make one more, uh, one more um, uh, chapter on this kind of stuff. But hopefully this will get you by when it comes to understanding the mathematics behind it. Mill dot mill ranging formula and the inversely proportional nature of second focal plane reticles magnification versus subtension is an important thing to know, I think. Important concept if you want to get involved with this long range shooting. And that's about it. Thanks.